Hello friends, welcome again to this tutorial for beginners in Revit. Now I believe you are getting more comfortable with the software. This is the part 11, and the topics covered here are related with components and railings. Before starting, I want to mention that this tutorial is sponsored by RevitFamily.biz. This is a company that creates Revit families for residential projects. Brenton Weberg is the creator of these families, and the current ones are the results of years of client feedback. So each pack contains a vast amount of families. They are fully parametric, have specific features, and also each one comes in several types. So if you are curious, click on the link available in the description of the video. There are sample files available for free, so you can try the families out to check if they suit your needs. Finally, if you are interested in purchasing, you can get a discount of 30% off if you use the code available in the description of the video, which is CATBLOCK30. Now let's start with the tutorial. Components Part 2 in this section, we will talk about specific characteristics of the categories that you can find in the command component. As you remember, all these elements that don't have a specific command for its category go here. And some of those are furniture, casework, plumbing features, lighting, these we have already covered earlier, specialty equipment, mechanical equipment and many others. Here we will just focus in some of them, and the first one will be furnitures. We are going to use this floor plan as our example, and this section 1 to view the items in this perspective. Ah, and there is actually a section line here, but it's just hidden in this view. And remember, to reveal hidden elements in Revit, we click on the button that has the symbol of a bulb, and look, there is the section plane. Now I'm going to click on the command component, in place a component, and now in this list I have already several families, because I have loaded them before in this project. I'm going to start with this dresser. Then I can click to put it where I want, and in this case we cannot notice which is the front or back part, as we can only see here a rectangle perspective. I go to the section view, and this time I can see that it's placed correctly. Although if the shelves were facing the wall, that's ok, because it's easy to rotate the element. Just hit the spacebar before placing it. And then it still works when the element is already placed on the plan. I can select it, push space to rotate it. And look that the spacebar also works in the elevation view. Now I'm going to add another furniture family, which is this chair, M Chair Brower. This time I can recognize where is the back of the chair. Then let's insert a desk. This family has different types, which differ in their sizes. When I go to the plan, you can see the pointer is located in the corner at the bottom. Most of the time, the position where I have the corset means it's the back part. If I leave it here, you can see that it faces against the wall. So just use the space bar again, like we did before. An important feature to know about furniture families is that they are hosted by a level. Unlike other categories, for example a microwave, a specialty equipment family. We can offset it up or down from the level where we are. But for the furniture families, that's not possible. Now look at the properties of this bed. On the part elevation from level is locked, as you can see. Actually, this makes sense because these items are mainly placed directly on the floor, like chairs, tables, beds, dressers or closets. I know that we can put a chair over a bed, 
but usually that's not a practical thing and we don't want that, so that's why Revit has this constraint locked. We can find furniture families easily in the Revit libraries folder. First, choose the country. Then, all these folders are different categories. Find furniture and the families here are organized by these four kinds. Beds. Here you have sitting. Families for storage. And tables. All those need to be hosted by a level. The exceptions are these three families located here. The TV and TV stand, we can offset them from the level. And the mirror, which is hosted by a wall. Now I'm going to give some tips about the casework category. The families here are many cabinets that can be used in kitchens, but there are also countertops. We are going to start with the base cabinets. I'm going again to the component and load the family from my libraries. Double click on casework, then base cabinet, and I'm going to insert this one with a double door and add it to the plan. However, Notice that this is not exactly the family that I have chosen. It only has one door there, but it's fine, as it's still a cabinet. So leave it there. But why did this happen? The reason is, I have already loaded that family in this project before. I just didn't remember it. Look, if I click in the family and search in the list, here it is, the double door sink unit. It was already there. So, I insert one element like this, next to the other cabinet. Now, I'm going to switch to section 1, and you can see the perspective of these cabinets here. They look interesting. Now, let's see a different feature comparing with furnitures. Elevation from level is not locked, meaning that we can offset it from the ground and leave it where I want. If I type 300, it offsets that distance above the level. Then let's move it even more up. Flying. <laughs> okay, I know this is not a very logical way, but I'm doing it because I want you to remember something. When we switch to the floor plan, the casework flying is still appearing, even it's above the cut plane in the view range, but below the top plane. I can show you the view range window to check out those heights. And remember that only casework, windows and generic models are shown above the cut plane. OK. This time I'm going to insert a corner cabinet. It has the purpose to be placed in a corner of a room and I can hit the spacebar to rotate it if I need it. I put it here, but actually it's not required to be hosted by a wall, so if I leave it in the middle of the room, it's fine as you can see. A corner cabinet shares the same characteristics as the remaining base cabinets. Now. Let's see another tip about casework. If I drag the section plane to intersect the cabinets, you can see that they look different in the section view. Casework are cuttable elements, so I can see what is inside. Now I want to talk about countertops, but before, I'm going to insert a corner unit here and then I want a copy of this cabinet and I can do it by creating similar look how easy it is and align it next to the corner cabinet on the other side I can drag also this one here then the countertop is going to cover all these cabinets in a 3D perspective it looks like this so I'm going to load a new component 
go to countertops, and there are several here for choosing. In this case, it's more suitable for me these ones that have a chamfer in the corner. Then go to the corner, click, and now an important information. Countertops are parametric families. We can use those grips to adjust the size to fit our cabinets. For example, this one at the corner adjusts the countertop at the right. And then I could change this part, but I don't need, because it's already in the correct position. Also, this grip above just moves the countertop down here. Finally, I switch to the 3D and look that it fits perfectly above the cabinets. The casework category also includes tall cabinets, and the Revit libraries provide these three families. I select the first one, open it. I'm going to leave it in the room at the right. Ah, and move back the section plane, so I can view the main profile when I go to that section view. Look, here it is. And unlike base cabinets, tall cabinets don't need a countertop. Finally, there are also wall cabinets. These ones have a host element. Exactly, it's a wall. I'm going to choose this one. And look that Revit doesn't allow me to insert it here, as I have to connect it to a wall. For example, I click here. And in a 3D view, it has this aspect. Plumbing fixtures. Among other categories available in the Revit libraries are the plumbing fixtures. These include the elements used in bathrooms, bathtubs, water closets, sinks, etc., as well as sinks for kitchens. OK, I'm going to add first a toilet, here in water closets, and not all these families have the same parameters. For example, this 2D toilet only appears in floor plans and it's hosted by a wall. Yes, the rectangle on this side means that I have to attach the element at the wall. Let's place it. Look, can you see? And even it seems that the left part will stay a bit inside, when I click, it snaps exactly at the wall boundary. So it's very intuitive to place wall attached plumbing fixtures. Let's go back and look at this 3D toilet. It's not hosted, so I can place it wherever I want and it will show up in all the views. On the other hand, this commercial wall attached toilet needs a wall. And be aware that the wall here is not part of the family, it just indicates that I need the wall to place it. Let's open it, and the process is identically as the 2D toilet, as you can see. Now, this time I want to load a sink family. There is a wide variety here, as you can see. Again, I can find 2D and 3D families. The difference here is that 2D sinks, let's choose this double 2D, display also in 3D views. If I attach it at this wall, look that I can view it also in the 3D view. And in the properties, the first parameter is the countertop height, in this case 900 mm above the level. So, the purpose of these sinks is to place them on countertops and not alone, like I have just done. It means I should insert a sink here and if the height don't match the countertop, I can easily change the value in the properties. Now you can explore all the families available in each category. We can find almost everything what is usually needed in a project. For example, in the electrical fixtures, I'm going to add a switch that requires a wall. And this element is not shown in the floor plan, 
Actually, the reason is that it's currently located above the cut plane. My cut plane is around 1000 meters and the location of this element is above. Its shape in a 3D view would be like this. Now, before finishing this chapter, I want to give you a useful tip. After loading many families into our project, it may be a bit hard to find the one that we need in this list. So for that, we can enter one or two keywords. For example, let's search for the sink in 2D. I type sink, 2D, and here it is. Railings. In the next part, we are going to learn how the railings work here in Revit. We can build railings on stairs, we have covered a little bit about this earlier, or we can add a railing to a floor, for example to limit a balcony. In the example I show you here, I need railing stair to avoid people falling into the ground. And this is the current perspective in a 3D view. Ok, the first thing I'm going to do, as this plan is a bit messy, is hiding some elements that I don't need for now. And also, you get a bit of practice doing this. So, first I click in this dimension and hide the full category. And you can see that all the others also disappear. Then I go to this bed, do the same thing, to hide all the elements from the same category, in this case, furniture. Then, to hide the plumbing fixtures, I can click on one of the elements of this bathroom. And finally, I just need to go to the kitchen, hide this freezer. And the remaining elements are casework. Ok, now we can insert the railings. Ok, we have to go to the icon at the Architecture tab and select the option Sketch Path. As I am in the sketch mode, I need to draw the railing and I will stay with the method it's already selected, the Line tool. Make the first segment on the left. Then click again at the corner to continue drawing, until I reach the wall again. Then click on the tick to confirm the railing. And switch to the 3D view to have a look at its appearance. Good, there it is. But to be honest, I'm not very happy with this result. You can see that the railing is placed exactly in the border. And I don't think this is a very practical way to build it. Due to that reason, we are going to repeat this. First, delete the railing. And activate again the railing tool. And before drawing, this time have a look at the options bar. First, I'm going to check this box, chain because with this I will draw the lines continuously. Then I want to assign an offset distance as 100 mm because I don't want to have the railing exactly in the extremity. Go to the balcony, draw the railing and this time I have a margin of 10 cm from the border. And look that the segments in the corner trim automatically while I keep drawing. Let's click on the tick again to confirm it. And then we need the second balcony. Other drawing method is with peak lines. Set the same offset distance. And then I head towards the second balcony. And now look, depending on the position of the mouse, I can offset in the inner side of the floor or outside of it. Ok, now it's done. Go to the 3D view and you can see they look better. However, if I don't like the shape of this family, I can go to the properties and there are others here to select. Just click in the one that suits you better. This is a pipe style. And the last one, a glass panel. Ok, it looks like we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And 
and if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to Cutting Black. There you can find all the content of tutorials for beginners. See you on the next occasion.